Are you tired of doing this? Well, I'm here to help. My name's Comfy, and I've been a professional video editor for like a million billion years. I'm old. I've been asked how I put together my subtitles on the shorts I create for my clients, and luckily, I've got a workflow that makes this process as painless as possible. And I'm gonna show you my process so you can spend less time creating captions and more time playing your favorite video game, Fork Knife. What's that? That's wrong? Fortnite. That doesn't sound right. I feel very strongly that all shorts should include on-screen subtitles. In addition to accommodating viewers that are hard of hearing, a lot of people just watch shorts with their phones on silent. It's like they're pooping at work or like, you know, uh, whatever. I don't know. So adding subtitles to your shorts is essential to keeping more eyeballs on your work. We're going to cover both the technical aspect on this as well as more of the theory side of things. So even if you feel well versed in this topic, there's very likely still things you can learn from this video. But let's not waste any time. So here I have an old timeline for an already finished short for VTuber Punkalopi. Everything in this timeline is already finished except for the captions. So first things first, we're going to open up the text tab. You might already have that window set up in one of your workspace uh, presets here, but if not, we're going to go over here to window and you scroll all the way down and it's down here under text. So this is the text window and all we have to do is hit create transcription. So that opens up this window. I'm going to go from top to bottom. We start with language. Um, most of you watching this video will probably just leave it on English, but it does have some other options here if you have a need for that. We have speaker labeling. By default, it's set to no, don't separate speakers, and you can leave it there. And last, we have audio analysis. By default, it's set up to audio on track mix. So that's just kind of everything down here, all of your audio layers. If you have set it up in such a way that all of your dialogue is on a single track, you can tell it like, oh, I want audio one, audio two, etc. But we're just going to leave it as mix. And then we're going to hit transcribe. And now it is going to automatically transcribe it to the best of its ability. And here it is. So now we have the transcript. So now once this is set up, if you go to the top of the video, do you guys know what's most important? It follows along and lets you know where in this transcript the video is, which is very helpful. However, as I mentioned, this isn't like perfect. So now the next step for you is to go through this and make sure that it's gotten all the words correctly. We can even see right off the bat, Punkalopi speaks very quickly so it often misses words that she says it just missed the word do you at the very beginning here do you guys know what the most so i can just go in here do you and then i can i can fix that you'll always be able to edit any of this text at any point but doing it here kind of makes things pretty easy from the get-go so i'm gonna clean this up and i'll be right back transition all right so i've gone through and fixed up all the text so now on to the next step we're gonna hit these three little dots here click on that hit create captions. That's gonna open up this new menu. We're gonna click on the little arrow here. I'm gonna tell you how I typically set this up, but definitely feel free to experiment. And again, these parameters are kind of specifically for shorts. So first we're gonna hit single lines instead of double. I don't typically want double lines appearing if I can help it, right? Gap between captions, we're gonna always hit that to zero. I don't want there to be any gaps in between these captions, right? Minimum duration in seconds, we're gonna lower this as low as it'll go. And then minimum length in characters, I typically put this to 22. This is how many characters it'll max out in a particular caption. We're going to have to kind of manually adjust a lot of these, but putting it at 22 kind of feels like a, a good sweet spot in my experience. And last but not least, we have the style section. Now, if you've already made a font style, these will appear in your project. I can click here and we can see that I have a few different ones that I've made, but yours will be empty if you're doing this from scratch. And then once all that is set up, you're going to hit create captions and it'll take a sec. And then if we zoom this out, we're going to have a new subtitle track with all of these captions that we've made. And they're gonna appear here. I mean, you can see if you squint really hard, this is the caption right there at the bottom. Is that good? Is the video over? Did you like it? Was that helpful? No, of course not. We're going to adjust this. <laughs> Hello, this is just a reminder that if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like. It helps me out a lot, and I love you, no matter what. O okay, bye. So, click on this, and then over here, it gives you all these different font options, right? I'm gonna pull this out and make it pretty big. So, if you've never looked at this before, this might seem a little intimidating, but I got you, don't worry. Okay, so first things first, we're going to sort of make this a little bigger. I feel like in the ballpark of a size 100 font is what you're looking for in a 1080 by 1920 shorts format canvas, and then we're gonna pick the font. So you're you're gonna want to make sure that you are picking a font that is readable. Typically, this sort of means something that's a little bit thicker. Um, this November would be okay. Stuff that's hard to read, things like any kind of script, um, any kind of very, very thin stuff. Like, that's okay. That's that's not that bad. But you want to just make sure that it is easy to read. Now, Punkalopi has a font that I always use for her, but we're going to pick something different. We're going to go ahead and just pick this Acme font. It looks okay. All right, so now we're going to make the text look pretty. It's a little hard to read. It's white. 
on light pink with a drop shadow. That's not like incredible. We're gonna make this look a lot better. So first things first on this, you're gonna choose the fill. It's really hard to go wrong with a white fill and a black stroke. So let's just kind of do that first. We're gonna uncheck the shadow. I don't personally really like shadows. We're gonna check now the stroke and right away you see that this sort of just made it a lot bigger and, and blobbier. Because the stroke defaults to white, we're gonna change it to black here. And now that looks a little better. But we can kind of thicken this up if you click and drag here, uh, maybe about there. So that's nice and readable. So you want to make sure that it's going to be readable anywhere you put this text. So black stroke, white text, you can't go wrong with that. However, if you want to kind of maybe style it a little more, we can get kind of fun with the colors. For Bunkalope, we might want to do something like a sort of a pink gradient. So in your color picker here, it defaults to a solid color, but you can click here and select linear gradient, and that'll give you some options, right? So if I were to say, I want to add a little pink to this, we can kind of click on this bottom dot here, find a nice kind of lightish pink, and then you see that it goes from white to pink, right? So if we hit OK here, now we see that it has kind of like this nice kind of white to pink gradient. If we want to adjust this, we can see in real time like, oh, OK, maybe I want to click and drag this so it stays white at the top a little more. There's just sort of a bit of pink at the bottom. You can even add if I think if you click anywhere here, you can add like a third color. I could go crazy with this and we can kind of like do a lot of stuff. You can just add like a ton of different colors if you so wanted to, but we're going to cancel this. We're gonna leave it like this. We're gonna just say that this is what we want right now. And then lastly, this text is at the bottom. Now, if you've ever used TikTok, you know that TikTok specifically has a ton of garbage here at the bottom. Lots of text, lots of all sorts of hashtags, all that stuff. So you don't want your text to be down here. So these two parameters right here are our movers and groovers, right? So you can do it from here, that's up and down, and this is left to right, but typically you always want these to be in the center unless you're doing something specific, right? Additionally, you can kind of click on this and now you can see the box that it is contained in. So if I wanted to adjust this, right, I can say like, hi guys, hi mom, how are you? Okay, now I ran out of space. So if I really wanted to see the end of this, I have a few options. I can click on this, with the pointer tool selected, and it'll show me that there are three kind of handles here. And if I pull this up, it'll kind of automatically fill this box as best it can. You might notice that it is anchored to the bottom, and that is controlled by this over here, this zone. If I wanted it anchored to the top, I would check this guy. And if I want it anchored to the middle, I would check this guy here. You typically, for, for what we're doing, you don't really want to mess with any of these side ones. We're going to leave this in the middle for now, and I'm actually going to erase everything I just typed. However, now we have this big old box, and you might notice that now if I try to do this, it won't let me push it up any higher than the box will allow. So the box has kind of built-in safeties. You can't push it all the way to the end. So what do we do about that? Well, we're going to click out, select our pointer tool again, click on this, and then we can shrink this down to maybe something that looks about this. I would suggest that you'd set this up so it only ever holds about three lines worth of text. So that will give you a lot more freedom when you are trying to place your text, right? Because you want to make sure, you know, like this might seem okay right now, but if we go over here, it's kind of covering up her chin. This isn't really the best place for this, right? So we're going to want to probably put this about here or so. And since we've done all the setup work, anytime you're going to want to change this, it'll be a lot easier to do. So once you've completed all this, you have something that I feel looks pretty good, right? So if we go on to the next one, uh-oh, are you telling me I have to do this individually each time? No, of course not. What do you take me for? An idiot? A waster of your time? How could you say that about me? All right, so back in the essential graphics window, you have something here called track style. It is currently set to none. But what we're going to do is we're going to click on this. And these are all my old ones that I've already created. We're going to pretend they're not there for the moment. We're going to create style. And we're going to name this Lopi Test Font and hit OK. Everything in this subtitle layer has been changed to this preset we've just made. Additionally, if we go over to our project folder, there is a new file in this project called Lopi Test Font. So within this project, anytime you want to use this text style, you can do it. The one important thing to remember about these sort of font files is that they live inside your project. So if you want to move them from this project to a new project, all you have to do is copy it in program and paste it in the new project. There's no file like on your computer that reflects these different font presets. They're all in Premiere. Another quick tip if you feel like using it, this is the font style for this entire subtitle track. If perhaps you have two different speakers and you want to give them two different font styles, you can right click over the subtitle area. You can add a track 
Uh, just hit OK. Don't worry about any of that. So because these are captions right now, they work sort of strangely. You can only ever have one caption showing at any given moment. However, if we wanted to, right, we could drag this guy up. And if I wanted in this hypothetical situation to make speaker number two, uh, we'll say her old font. So now that is set up to track two. And then if I go back over here and toggle this back on, we have the pink. And when we do the next step, all of the different tracks that you've made will retain their different fonts. So just keep that in mind if you need it. We're gonna undo that for now though. All right, let me put this back. So now what we need to do, as I mentioned before, it has done its best to put the words where it thinks they belong, but it's gonna get some stuff wrong. And additionally, we're gonna adjust how the words show up on screen to kind of make it flow a lot better. So let's watch a little bit of this and kind of see where we're at. Do you guys know what the most important part of a human body's diet is? Okay, so right off the bat, I can see some stuff that I don't like. I think a Adjusting this to say, do you guys know, is a better place to kind of have this word spacing. However, now we kind of have it on two different lines, which I think can be fine, but I think that setting it up so that it only shows up on one line whenever possible just looks a little better. So you can shrink this down like a little bit and we'll leave it like that. So do you guys know? Do you guys know what? So now we have another issue where we have to adjust this. Um, if you hold down control and then click and drag, you can like adjust both of these at the same time. Um, that's sort of just a time saving thing. Now we have, do you guys know what? Do you guys know? So now we need to adjust this one. Of course, we're going to get rid of the word no here. Similarly, we're going to say what the most, because that's the next word. I feel like, do you guys know what the most? I think kind of framing up the words like this makes it a little easier to absorb than kind of breaking up the sentences in kind of strange places. So the only thing left that I might take a look at is kind of the weighting of the top and bottom lines. This is a little too big as we've made it. I don't think in this instance and in shrinking this down is gonna be, that's that's like a little too small. Um, so we're gonna leave it at the 100 that we chose, but I think that this looks a little bit nicer than kind of having it top heavy. I think bottom heavy is almost always better if you have to choose, but that's just me. So typically the kind of stuff I'm now gonna be looking for are that the subtitle breaks are starting on a new clip. You wanna make sure that these are always like splitting. You don't wanna have one caption going into a new cut whenever possible. So you can see right here, it's auto done it kind of one frame off. So basically what you're going to want to do at this point is go through the whole thing, adjust kind of where the captions show up, how you want each caption section to be spaced, and also to make sure there's not captions like covering up important you know, things on the screen. In this instance, we can move this particular caption up so it's not covering up this very scary face and so on and so forth. I'm gonna very quickly get this done and I'll be back in a sec. Another transition. All right, and we're back. I've gone ahead and done all that. So at this point, technically, you could consider yourself finished, but we're gonna go a step further. So the next thing you wanna do is select all of your caption like clips, come up here to graphics and titles, and down here, if you have them selected, you'll see upgrade caption to graphic. We're gonna click on that. And now you'll see that we have all these pink clips down below. So this is effectively the same thing. However, Adobe Premiere now considers this a graphic. And what that means is that we can now add transitions and effects to all of these text clips. So again, let's just rewatch the first couple seconds. Do you guys know what the most important part of a human body's diet is? So these are all hard cutting into each other. And that's like, fine, but I think that we can make it look a little bit nicer. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to teach you a way to set up a very easily repeatable transition for each of your different text pieces. So there's a lot of different things you can do. A lot of people have stuff that pops up into the screen. I like to do it this way that I'm about to show you where it kind of comes up a little bit. There's like a bit of a dissolve. That's what I'm going to teach you how to do. But the process in doing this is going to be the same, regardless of how you like to set up your transitions. All right. So first we're going to go over to the effect controls. We're going to find opacity under the video area. So there's this little stopwatch here at the very beginning of the clip. We're going to hit this stopwatch and that is going to create a keyframe. So Lopi records her videos in 60 frames a second. So keep that in mind when you're creating your presets. But I found that the sweet spot is about four frames. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. And we're going to hit this button to create another keyframe. Now we have two keyframes. And from them, we can go back and forth clicking on these little buttons. So this first one we set at 100% opacity. What I want to do is lower it all the way to zero. So now on this first keyframe, we have nothing. And on the second keyframe, 
we have 100% opacity. So if we scrub through this, we'll see that it's ramping up from 0% opacity to 100% in the space between these two keyframes. And this looks okay, but we can jazz it up even more. All right, next step is that we're gonna look up the transform filter. You're gonna find that under the distort, under video effects, but you can type it in here. So we're gonna click and drag this onto this clip as well. So to see what we're doing, I'm gonna click the little FX to hide the opacity changes. This just sets it to default, so we can undo this in a second. But if we scroll back up, we'll see all the different options under the transform filter we've just applied. So nothing has changed yet. We have to manipulate all these. But what we're going to do is we are going to do the same sort of thing. So we're going to set a keyframe at the beginning of the position area. We're going to click on that and then we scroll one, two, three, four. And then we hit this dot, create another keyframe. We're going to go back and what we're going to do is we're going to create a little bit of movement. So we're going to start it a little bit lower. We don't want to go too far. We can kind of just see that it just comes up just like a little bit. So now if we reapply what we just did with the opacity, we get the full effect. So it kind of comes up like this. I think it looks pretty sharp and I think it's a little more eye catching than just cutting from text to text. Know the most important part of a human body. So at this point, if you felt like it, you could copy this thing that you just made, select everything and paste it. And then you can do the same thing with the opacity, you copy this and you paste it. The most important part of a human body's diet is- And that's fine, but we're gonna make it even easier than that. So I'm gonna undo that. In this first clip, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a preset. So what we want to do for that is we're going to take the two areas that we just affected, right? So I'm going to click on opacity and then we're going to scroll up and I'm going to hold control and then I'm going to click on transform and that'll make sure that opacity is still selected. We're going to right click on this little hamburger thing on effect controls. And since we have these two things selected, we should be able to choose save preset. We're going to click on this. And that brings up this menu. The first things first, we're gonna rename this to something that we can remember. I'm just gonna name this text tutorial transition, but whatever you name it, just make sure it's gonna be something that you can easily remember so that you can type it in to the effects search bar. So next we have three different options. We're gonna choose anchor to endpoint. And what that means basically is no matter how long the clip is that you're trying to put this effect on, it'll always put it right at the beginning. Depending on what you might be doing, you can use this preset to also affect the out point, um, or the scale, which will just make the effect change depending on kind of how long it is. So we're gonna anchor to endpoint, hit okay. So now we're gonna type in text tutorial and it shows up right there. So right now this clip doesn't have it. I can click and drag this here and then it implements it there or I can select all of the text Know what the most important part of a human body's diet is? And there it is, it's just that easy. And so what this means is that you never have to set this up again. Whenever you make a new project with new text, the last thing you'll have to do is just select everything and click and drag this over it. So you front loaded a bit of your work to make it so much easier in the long run. And you made it, pat yourself on the back. I'll wait. I know some of that might've been a little bit dense. So if you have any questions about anything I've gone over, please definitely let me know in the comments. And if you're looking for more shorts tutorial goodness, over here's a video where I go over the ins and outs of setting up your OBS specifically to record shorts.